living Lord Jesus, risen Lord Jesus, at your name, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Jesus, at your name, lives are transformed, addictions are broken, fears are released, anxiety is calmed. At your name, the forces of hell run. At your name, we bow down. We worship. We celebrate who you are. God with us, Emmanuel. So living Lord Jesus, meet us in this time. Reveal yourself. Those of us who know you, may we see you with greater clarity. Those who are wondering if you're real, may your presence be undeniable this night together. And now as we open your word, as we reflect on these words that your church has known and echoed and sung together for centuries, meet with us around your word, we pray in your name, Jesus. Amen. If you're standing, please feel free to be seated. And if you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Philippians chapter 2. If you don't have a Bible, we'll have the passage up on the screen. If you're online, we'll have the passage on screen. I'm going to read this passage twice. And I want you to listen, and I want you to try to notice the epic nature of this passage, and I want you to try to notice sort of where it begins, where it goes, because it's all over creation. It's all over heaven and earth. This passage jumps from earth to heaven to the deepest parts of earth and back to heaven again in this short passage. So notice that as we look together at God's Word. I'm going to begin in verse 3. Of Philippians chapter 2. It'll show up on the screen a couple of verses in, but I'm going to start a little before that to get us ramped into this passage, all right? So the Apostle Paul is writing to a group of Christians in the city of Philippi, trying to give them direction on how to live their lives. And he says, Do nothing, nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Unfortunately, we do a lot of things out of those two things, but do nothing out of those two things. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves. Not looking to your own interest, but each of you to the interests of others. That's the starting point, just in the human relationships. We start in the, in the earthly realm, all right? In your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Now, Paul is setting us up to give us the example of how to live our lives. And in this example, we find what is thought by many people to be one of the first hymns of the early church. It's written in kind of poetic stanza and poetic form, inspired by the Holy Spirit. But watch what happens here. So, so we, we're to, in our relational world. And by the way, next Sunday we start a five-week series on whole relationships in a broken world. So this, you know, this gives us a picture of how to live into our relational world. In your relationship with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. Here it is. Who being in very nature God, Jesus the divine one, who being in very nature God, did not consider that equality with the Father, with God, something to be used to his own advantage, something to be held on to. So it starts in the glory of heaven. Rather, he made himself nothing by taking the very nature of a servant, a servant's heart, being made in human likeness. That's Christmas. That's the incarnation. Jesus comes among us, God with us, being made in human likeness. But it doesn't stop there. <coughs> and being found in appearance as a man... He humbled himself, not just a man, but a humble man, by becoming obedient to death, dying for us. That's the cross. That's Good Friday. That's the crucifixion. Obedient to death. Not just death, but lower than that, even death on a cross, the worst kind of way that anyone could die. The most perverse and painful form of execution ever invented by humanity. All right? Even death on a cross. We're at the lowest point. Now we find the resurrection. Therefore... God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth, and every tongue acknowledge, confess, that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Do you see the epic nature of what's going on here? Every song, and as we walk through this series this year, every first Wednesday, we're walking through a different song in the Bible. This is the song we're going to linger on tonight. Every song has a setting. 
And this one, the setting of this one, is from heaven to the cross and back to heaven again. In this one short passage, in talking about how we should relate to each other, as Paul lifts up Jesus as the model for all that we do, for all of how we live, but how we relate to one another, he gives this clear, vivid picture. This became a hymn, a song of praise in the first century church. There's all kinds of praise songs and hymns built off these words that the church has sung for 2,000 years now. It wasn't just a song then, it's a song now. But again, watch what's happening here, all right? Verse 6, who being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, to be held on to. So it starts in the glory of heaven. Jesus Christ was and is eternally divine. God. But he didn't hold on to that position. He allowed himself to be emptied, poured out, and came as one of us. How does one who is divinely God allow himself to be born in a human embryo, baby that grows inside of a woman, is pushed out of her birth canal, has to breathe for the air of life, and be held in the arms of a young virgin girl and have a strength sustained by her milk. If you can explain that to me, please, after the service, come and explain how that works. That God became a person. That the glorious one left the glory of heaven for the stench of a stable. But in the passage, it's not just that he came to this world, but he came to die. He came to give his life. And not just to die, but the passage says, to the bitter and shameful death of a cross. It doesn't get any lower than that. One who was higher than all became lower than all. But then the passage is clear, and then we don't, it doesn't say resurrection, but he then becomes exalted to the highest place. The place above any place in the name of any name, that at the name of Jesus, the Christ, the Messiah, Every knee would bow in heaven, on earth, and under the earth. And every tongue confess Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Every tongue will confess one day. We who put our faith in Jesus, we will confess delightfully, joyfully, and freely. Those who have rebelled and fought against God will confess when they recognize he is the Holy One. But they don't do it because they love him. They do it because they realize it's true. But every tongue will confess in heaven and on earth and under the earth. So in this one song, the setting is heaven, earth, the grave, the cross, and back to heaven. That's a setting for a song, wouldn't you say? <laughs> Let that just capture your heart and your mind. It's amazing. It's astounding. And also every song has a singer. And the early church sang and declared this song. Every song has a singer, or it's not a song. It's a poem on a page. But as a church, we sing, we declare the spiritual truths of who Jesus is. If you know Jesus, if you're part of his church, you will sing of his glory. You will sing of his humble sacrifice. We did that on Good Friday. We sang about the price that Jesus paid on the cross. We'll sing of that still. You'll sing of his resurrection. The old, the old hymn, Christ the Lord is risen today. Ha, 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 hallelujah. I don't know how you spell that. It's just a lot of ha, 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 ha. But it's just, you know, all these, these songs that lift up Jesus. We often do this as a congregation. We sing of his willing humiliation. And here's the key thing to know. Jesus didn't leave the glory of heaven and come to a manger and come to die on a cross because he was forced to. He came willingly, freely, by his choice out of love for you and love for me. It was his decision to leave the glory of heaven. And we can't even begin to comprehend what that means. Every song has a central message. And the central message of this song is that Jesus Christ is Lord, Messiah, ruler of all. So we bow our knees, we bow our heart, we bow our life at the name of Jesus. Later on in the service, after our baptisms, we're going to have a couple closing songs. I'm going to invite you at that time, if you're comfortable doing so, if you want to, to come and kneel here. And we've got, this is a perfect kind of kneeling area here with this. If you kneel here, you can you know, kind of put your elbows on here and pray. But just to come forward and kneel after we've, after we've shared communion, after we've celebrated a bunch of baptisms.
to come and just kneel before Jesus and say, I bow down. I worship you. I praise you. I humble myself before you because you humbled yourself for me, even to the bitter and shameful death of the cross. There's power in the name of Jesus. Do you live in that? Do you understand that? I remember Sherry with our three sons. Our sons are now all in their 30s. But I hope they still remember these words that Sherry sent, shared with them when they were in their, when they were three, four, five, six, seven, eight years old. She talked about when you're afraid, when you're scared. She said, just, she said, just say the name of Jesus. Say it again and again and again. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Now, now the, 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 the word isn't what has the power. It's who he is. And if you're someone who knows him and believes in him and you've given your heart to him, when you declare his name, the forces of hell tremble. By the way, not at you. They don't tremble at you. But he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. And if he lives in you and if you declare his name with authority, there is power in that. So Sherry taught our boys that as kids. And I, and I, I have to believe through the years there's been lots of times, even in their 20s and 30s, when there's moments where what they could do is just hold on to the name of Jesus because in his name is his person, and his name is his coming, and his name is his death, and his name is his resurrection, and his name is his power here today. Do you walk in that name? Do you hold to his name? And by the way, don't try to use his name like a magical incantation because in the Bible it's clear that when people did that, it didn't go well for them. It's the power of the name of Jesus spoken by somebody who knows Jesus. And those who try to use his name like a magical incantation will get themselves in trouble. It's only those who know him and know that he lives in them. And so how do we bow our knees? If, every knee, at, the name of, if at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, we ought to start doing it more and more now. There will come a day where every knee will bow. Right now, we choose to. So how do we bow our knees? Well, sometimes we physically bow our knees. Maybe you wake up in the morning and you roll out of bed onto your knees. And you say, Jesus, I give you this day. I give you my life. Maybe when you're gathered like this, you come forward and just kneel and bow humbly before him and look up at the cross and remember what he did for you. Maybe you bow your knee by surrendering an area that you've been holding on to. And it's time to give it back to him. It's time to let it go. See, bowing down is a sense, uh, the, the word worship actually means to, to lay yourself flat before God, to bow yourself fully before God, to be, to be totally surrendered to God. And so maybe one way you bow is by saying, I'm going to surrender and walk in obedience to the area I've been running from God. Maybe tonight as we worship in song a little bit later, just say, God, are the areas I need to surrender to you? That's a form of bowing down. Maybe you bow down by serving in Jesus' name. You know, tonight, there's people that are preparing food for refreshments later. They're serving in Jesus' name. That's bowing down. This worship team was here uh, long before most of us got here, preparing to lead us in worship. They're bowing down. They're surrendering. They're using their gifts. Find your way to bow down. Maybe you bow down by sharing with other people how much you love Jesus. It makes you a little nervous, but you need, people need to know. Anytime you surrender and give yourself over to Jesus and do what he calls you to do, it's a form of bowing down. So keep bowing down before him. Each week we talk with each song we're looking at about how great songs can move a heart. When you hear a great song, long before I was a Christian, I enjoyed music. And there's songs I would listen to again and again and again and again by different bands that I liked. And man, they had such powerful messages and they kind of shaped my thinking. A good song locked in your heart and locked in your mind. Have you had a song so stuck in your mind that all of a sudden somebody says to you, why are you humming that song? And you're like, I didn't know I was. But it's just there. It's just in, in you and it's coming out of you. A, a, a good song, a great song can move the heart. So this song that we're looking at, this song from the book of Philippians that, that really celebrates Jesus' coming, his life, his resurrection, his ascension to heaven. Here's some of the themes that you, can, that you can let shape you, okay? Here's some of the truth that comes through this one passage, this one song. The divine one came for you. The divine one of heaven left the glory of heaven and came for you. That's worth celebrating. The di divine one died willingly for you. Someone say amen. amen. The divine one died willingly on a cross to pay for your sins. Do it again. Say amen. amen. All right. How about this? The divine one rose and ascended to heaven for you. Someone say amen. amen. 
He did. And the divine one rules and he's here right now for our sake. Someone say amen. amen. Right? He came, he died, he rose, he rules. That's our Jesus. So celebrate him and rejoice in him. And then the greatest songs can transform a life. When the message, when the truth gets in you and gets a hold of you. It can change you. It can change the trajectory of your heart, of your life. It can change the tra trajectory of a home, of a marriage, of a friendship. It can change every part of your life. If, you, if, if a song, a scriptural song, holds truth that captures your heart and changes your life, it can change everything. And so, in light of this passage, who being in very nature God, he didn't consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. But he, Jesus, made himself nothing. Taking the nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, being found in appearance of a man, he humbled himself even further to becoming obedient to death, even death on a cross. So walk in humility like Jesus. Do you remember how this passage started? It's about how we relate to each other. And Paul says, let me give you a picture of Jesus. He says, humbly treat others better than yourselves. The truth of this song should change every relationship you have. Humbly serving, humbly not demanding on your way all the time. The truth of God's word transforms our lives. Walk in humility. Lift him up and exalt him every day. Exalt him for being glorious. Exalt him for humbling himself. Exalt him for dying on the cross. Exalt him for being lifted up again to heaven. But exalt and praise God over and over and over. And one of the best ways to lift up Jesus is to tell people he's real. To tell people that you know him, that you love him. And I know for most Christians, we think if we talk about the fact that we know Jesus and love Jesus, it'll freak people out. But can I tell you something? Most of the time, it doesn't. If someone knows you, and they love you, and they trust you, and you tell them that you've met Jesus, and you love him, and he's changed your life, most people are going to think to themselves, man, I wonder if that's real. I wonder if Jesus would love me too. People are more open than we imagine or dream. Sometimes we're too shy. Sometimes you just have to, out of who you are, tell your story and tell his story. You'll be amazed. And if somebody isn't ready for it, you know what they'll say? They're not going to punch you. They're not going to burn down your house and steal your stuff. That might happen in some parts of the world. They might say something like this. Okay, that's enough for now. That's <laughs> what my dad would say to me sometimes when I was sharing my faith with him. Okay, Kevin, that's good for now. Never punched me, never beat me up, never rejected me. Just told me settle down for a while. That's okay because that happens occasionally, but mostly people get fascinated by Jesus. If he's risen, if he's alive, if he's in your life, share your story and watch what God does. So I want to give an invitation to think deeply. I want to take just a moment and ask you just to quiet your heart if it helps you to bow your head and just think for a moment. What did it take for Jesus to leave glory behind and to come humbly among us to suffer and to die. What did it take? What did he have to do to leave perfect heaven and come to be broken and spit on and rejected? What did it take? Why would he do that? Maybe ask him right now, why, Jesus? Why would you do that? hope the conviction in your heart is that he did it because he knew it was the only way to bring us home. The only way to be back in relationship with you. The only way to make a way for you to come to be with him forever. That's love. And one more question to think deeply about. What keeps you from bending your knees and surrendering your life to Jesus? What gets in the way? 
Is it a schedule thing? Is it a pride thing? Is it a hurt and anger thing? I don't know what it is. But just quietly reflect, what keeps me from bending my knees and surrendering to Jesus? And we just quietly pray, Jesus, take it away. Whatever it is that's in the way of me, truly, humbly bowing down before you. Jesus, I ask you to remove it. Just have a moment to pray to him about that. And continuing in the spirit of prayer, will you just, between you and Jesus, will you thank him for coming? Just right now, thank him for leaving. Jesus, thank you, you left heaven. You came to this world out of love for us. Just tell him right now, Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Jesus, thank you. Will you dare right now to praise him for his suffering? We're going to have communion in a moment. We're going to remember his broken body. Just in your own prayer, between you and him, say, Jesus, thank you that you were broken to make me whole. Thank you that your body was broken on the cross to give me new life. Your suffering has healed me. I thank you, Jesus, that you paid the price. Thank him for that. I'm going to invite the worship team to come as we pray this last part of our prayer. I'm going to invite Pastor Sean to come to prepare to lead us in communion. But will you just pray right now <clears throat> and ask the Spirit of God to give you strength and give you courage to bow down more and more and more. We just begin to pray, God, I want to be a person who bows my knees to you. But beyond that, I want to bow my life to you. As we prepare to come to the table, just say, God, help me be a person who declares that Jesus Christ is Lord, who bows my knee to him, that the exalted one who came and lived and died and rose again and is exalted, he's my Lord. He's my leader. I will follow him wherever he calls me to go. Just talk to him about that for a minute as you prepare your heart for this time of communion. Well, as we prepare our hearts to come to the table tonight, uh, for those of you who are on campus with us when you came in tonight, you should have received one of the communion elements, both the wafer and the juice in it. And if for some reason you didn't get one of those, I want you to go ahead and we'll, we'll ask the team just to bring up the lights a little bit so that if you didn't get one, go ahead and slip up your hand. We want to make sure that everyone who's a follower of Jesus has the opportunity to take communion tonight. So just go ahead and slip up your hand. We've got ushers. Our team will go through. And for those of you who are joining us online tonight, we're so thankful you're joining us. Now is a good time for you to have your communion elements, the juice, the bread, the cracker, maybe wine, Lord. Whatever it might be, tonight we want to come together as one body and we come together in communion. And so as we prepare our hearts to come to the table, Listen to these words from 1 Corinthians 11, verses 23 through 26. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. And so as we reflect on these verses, as we enter into this time of communion, we're reminded that communion is a sacred honor and privilege for followers of Jesus. Just as it was for the disciples at that Last Supper, Peter and James and John and Andrew and Nathaniel and Philip and the other disciples. 
we as followers of Jesus, his disciples today, this is a sacred honor and privilege for us as well. And so this is a privilege for all followers of Jesus. And so tonight, if you've joined us from another church, maybe Shoreline Church isn't your home church, but you've come to the cross, you've placed your faith in Jesus Christ, this is the Lord's table. This is the Lord's Supper. And so you are welcome. We welcome you to partake tonight with us as one body of Christ. And if you're not yet a follower of, ten, uh, of Jesus and you've joined tonight, and we're just going to encourage you to refrain from taking the communion elements. And we're going to encourage you after the service is over, maybe later on tonight or tomorrow, to have a conversation with what these communion elements mean with the person that invited you or brought you with tonight. This is the table of Jesus, and it's for his followers. And we also know we're reminded that this is a public act of worship. As we take the bread, as we take the juice, it is a public demonstration of our love, our worship, our faith in Jesus Christ. We're publicly proclaiming his death until he comes. And his death is what brought us life. So it's a public declaration of our faith in him. And this is also an intimate time of fellowship with the body of Christ. The communion means to come into union with Jesus and by his spirit with one another, followers of Jesus. And so whether you're joining us online from South Salinas or Singapore, we are one body united by the spirit of Jesus. And so as we come to the table tonight, we're going to take the elements together. We'll come and get to the bread, and we'll take it together as a sign of our unity in Christ. We'll take the juice together as a sign of our unity in Christ with one another. And as we come to the table, we come humbly remembering the sacrifice of Jesus. As Pastor Kevin just shared that passage from Philippians 2, Jesus Christ left the, the glory of heaven to dwell among us. He lived a perfect, sinless life, and he died a sinner's death on the cross for us. So we remember his sacrifice. And we also remember the grace of Jesus. It is by his grace that we are saved. Nothing we've done, nothing we ever could do could earn that. It's by his grace. And so we remember his grace. And we know that each one of us needs his grace and his mercy. We know we need that. We want to grow to be more like him. We want to love others in his name. And so tonight, we remember the grace of Jesus. And we also come humbly remembering the forgiveness of Jesus, that we are forgiven by his sacrifice, by his shed blood on the cross, we are forgiven. And so we can come to the table knowing we are forgiven. 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and purify us from all unrighteousness. And so as Pastor Kevin shared earlier, if there's anything that's going on in your heart, there's separation or something you're struggling with, maybe there's conflict, I just want to quiet right now. Let's just spend a few moments. Just quiet your heart. and Just give it to Jesus, whatever that might be, as we examine ourselves, as we prepare to come to the table. Let's just take a moment. Quiet our hearts, bow our heads. So if you have your communion elements, you can go ahead and Take out that little wafer. As we think about the bread, the bread represents the body of Jesus that was broken, broken for you and for me. Jesus, the humble servant who came to serve, not to be served, his body broken for you and for me. 
So tonight, let's partake together the bread, Jesus' body broken for you. represents the blood of Jesus, the blood that he shed on the cross willingly for you and I, the blood poured out, poured out for the forgiveness of our sins. And for the forgiveness of our sins, the new covenant that Jesus established His sacrifice changed our relationship with God eternally as we place our faith in Jesus Christ. We receive his forgiveness. We have eternal relationship with God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit. So tonight as we partake of the juice together, we remember the shed blood of Jesus. Let's partake together. So, Lord Jesus, thank you for your presence tonight, for meeting us here at the table, your table. And, Jesus, we are deeply humbled by the love that you have for us. And, Lord, we commit the days of our life, the rest of the days that you give us, Lord, to continue to follow you humbly, to serve you joyfully, and to worship you wholeheartedly. And, Jesus, we thank you again. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much, team. Uh, Here still in the presence of the bread and the cup, reminding us of the sacrament that we've already participated in here tonight. Sacrament, that $10 word that for me, I got to bring it down to 50 cents and make it sacred moment so that I can hang on to that. And you each participated individually in that sacred moment for you. And now we come to another sacrament, another sacred moment, this this act of baptism that takes place, that even though it's corporately, it's also singularly, each one of these come to the water here, just like the end of that song that pastor talked us through this evening, every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. And so our brothers and sisters have already gathered over here on the side. Pastor Dennis is going to come here and uh, climb into the water, which is warm, by the way, for them, just so you don't have to worry about them. And Pastor Sean is going to come up and just make sure that people get in and out easy enough. But I need to tell you that each one has submitted to us a testimony to introduce them as they come to the water. Now, some of them are very concise. Some of them were quite robust, and we've brought them down to what we can communicate in the time that we have allotted for the evening. Each one represents a life that is transformed. And I want to invite you, as these boys and girls, men and women, come out of the water, that you celebrate as their brothers and sisters of the beauty that's taking place in this moment, coming out to walk in newness of life. Uh, We talked with them over the the course of our time together about the the acronym GROW. Uh, I see this as a step of the, the way that they grow in their relationship with Christ. The G is gratitude. I am grateful for what God has done for me. The R is respect, respecting the one who is the authority in our lives to guide and direct it. The O is obedience. He's the one that calls us to this. And they come to the waters obediently, even though willingly. And finally, as they come up out of the waters in newness of life, to walk in his ways. Uh, Four verses I shared with them. Ephesians 4.1 talks about walking worthily. Ephesians 4.17 talks about walking with a renewed spirit. Uh, Ephesians 5.1 and 2 says walk in love. And then finally, Ephesians 5.15 says, walk circumspectly, walk wisely, walk intently. And that's what we invite them into in this time 
of baptism. So join me as those come together. First up is Jackson Hanna. Now Jackson's family arrived at Shoreline in June of last year and Jackson says, I started going to church and worshiping him. And he accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior on Sunday, November 5th, 2023. Jackson reminds us, he died on the cross for our sins and three days later, he rose again. Understanding Jesus' role in everything from creation to the cross, Jackson says he did it all for us. Tonight, Jackson is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up, next up is Danielle Pizzo. Danielle is a student at Trinity Christian School, and this is where the lights came on. Daniel didn't have much concern about Jesus prior to that, but when he heard that Jesus died for our sins, for his sins, something clicked. For today, Daniel declares, Jesus is my supreme Lord. We can't comprehend all that he has done for us. This night, Daniel is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up is Daniel's sister, Naomi. Now, Naomi came to know about Christ by coming to church with her family. She learned that Jesus died on the cross for her sin, including hers, and she is grateful for his willingness to do that and has chosen to be a Christ follower. Naomi is baptized tonight to signify that she is part of God's forever family. Jesus is her shepherd and her prince of peace. This night, Naomi Pizzo is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up is Jalen Moore. Now, Jalen's grandmother is the one who has taught him about Christ. And he says this, I felt something talk to me and I started to become a Christian. Jalen is before you to be baptized as a sign that he wants to be closer to Jesus Christ, his Lord and Savior. He wishes to express gratitude that God has provided for him such a glorious family. So let's celebrate with Jalen's baptism as tonight he is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Next up, Samantha Marin. Samantha first learned about Christ from her family, but grandparents, listen to this. Visits to her grandparents would also include talk about God and why it is important to have him in our lives. Church life has reinforced and cemented her understanding of who he is and what he desires of us. Samantha wants to be stronger in her walk with Christ and continue to do his will. And as such, she steps into the waters of baptism, her heart full with relationships that God has provided. Along, I love this, along with glimpses of heaven he's given in the natural beauty of so many earthly destinations. Tonight, Samantha is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Next up is Alyssa Flores. Now, at a very confusing time of life last year, with nothing seeming to make sense, Alyssa turned towards the Lord. During the chaos and confusion, he was the only one who made sense, providing his presence of love and safety near her. He has never given up on her. Alyssa is thankful for what he has given her, such as her son, Caleb, 
She's grateful for Jesus because he is her firm foundation. Tonight, Alyssa is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is Jose Madrigal. Now in college, Jose was stuck in a routine of sin, which was always a dead-end chase of fake love and happiness. And at his lowest point and without hope, a voice would always tell him to pray. So Jose started praying and reading the word to understand. He was lukewarm, not ready to step in the door. But Jose says this, but the Lord gave me what I wanted and it changed me. I gave, I made the gift an idol and I lost myself. Months went by and I still felt empty until November 8th when I said I really wanted to change and give my life to Jesus. So we celebrate Jose as he enters the waters of baptism, rising up to walk in newness of life. This night, Jose is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now coming to the waters is Arlene Anukabe. Arlene has been going to church since she was younger and knew of him but didn't know him in an intimate relationship. At 17, Arlene and her family were in their second year of homelessness. She was invited to a church group on campus where her lovely friend Grace helped her learn more about Christ. And Arlene accepted Christ and began to walk and grow in him. God placed baptism on her heart while at a young adults meeting led by Pastor Brandon, who mentioned the baptism class. And she felt that this was her next step of obedience as a Christ follower. Arlene is thankful for God's guidance, as well as for renewing her through the hardships and not allowing her heart to harden through that process. This is from Arlene. Jesus Christ means so much to me. He was a home when I didn't have one. He became my security, my safe place, my best friend. The intimate bond I have with him is truly treasured. His comfort and love is meant to be experienced it is truly the definition of love. Tonight, Arlene is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is Jocelyn Flores. Now, Jocelyn is known of Christ throughout her formative years. But this past year, she's moved from head knowledge to heartfelt relationship, a relationship which continues to develop and deepen. Recent struggles have shown Jocelyn that he is the way and has shown her a love that can only be received from him. And she is thankful to God for never giving up on her and always showing her pure love. This night, Jocelyn Flores is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up is Kathy Floyd. Now, Kathy grew up in the church, and she was saved at the age of 15 in a youth camp. The year 2020 was a horrible one in the Floyd family, with Kathy coming close to losing her own life in the midst of the loss of her baby. But in the midst of that praying for a miracle, Kathy found that Jesus provided for her fully. She's been wanting to be baptized for a while now, and as one of our military families, we are so honored that this takes place here at Shoreline. Thank you for that. And as she enters the waters of baptism, 
baptism, she is grateful for his grace and his patience with her. This night, Kathy Floyd is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up is Amanda Berard. Anxiety and depression have had a stranglehold on Amanda for a long time. Dad would always tell her, just leave it in God's hands. But she didn't really know what he meant by that. More recently, a friend was visiting from, visiting from out of state and forced her, <laughs> forced her to go to church with her. But after hearing Pastor Kevin's sermons a few times, one of them stood out. And on November 5th of last year, Pastor Kevin led a prayer of salvation and a light bulb came on. And after saying that prayer, this huge weight was lifted from her shoulders and she felt like she could finally breathe. She felt peace. She felt God's presence. And over the past few months, Amanda has grown closer to God and is eager to get baptized. And she wants to keep growing in this spiritual journey and connection with God. Amanda shares this. <laughs> I am grateful to be here, living the life that he has planned for me. Tonight, Amanda Berard is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Coming next is Shanique Hernandez. Now, Shanique came to know Christ as a child attending church regularly with her family right here in Seaside. She is a follower of Jesus because she wants to have eternal life and to be a great role model to her son and raise him in the church so he too can know God and one day claim faith in Jesus, always having God in his heart, following his word. She is grateful for the gift of her son and being blessed with the opportunity to be a mom and to raise him to be a nice, respectful young man. Tonight, Shanique is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is Teresa Tufono. Now, growing up in the Catholic Church allowed Teresa to know about Christ as Lord and Savior, but at the age of 17, in the living room of her best friend, as Mama Pitts prayed over her, Teresa asked Jesus to come into her life. She felt strongly that she did not need an intermediary, and from that day forward, she is clear that she can go directly to Jesus. Tonight's baptism is seen by Teresa as her way to declare her faith openly that she is indeed a child of God. And tonight, Teresa is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs> Next up is Orlando Marin. Now, Orlando made a faith decision years ago around the age of 12. But last year, it became clear that baptism was in order. And father and daughter, who was in the water a little while ago, attended baptism class together. Now, I know Orlando is a man of very few words. But one thing he would like you to know is that Jesus is his Lord and Savior. This night... Orlando is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next up is Reuben Cruz, Jr. 
Now, growing up in a Christian home, Reuben had somewhat of a household faith. But when he was small, he started attending church without his parents, mostly alone or with his siblings. And he went to many different churches, always looking forward to the activities in Sunday school. Listen to this. The candy was an incentive too. <laughs> Slowly but surely, he was building a bond with Jesus. Even when he stopped going to church, Jesus was in his heart. He was in his mind and in his soul. In Reuben's word, Christ sowed this seed. I just had to water it. Now, Reuben is a volunteer at the food pantry, and it's provided him an opportunity to serve people and see what God's work does for so many. And it's enhanced the value of serving without expectation. The time there spend, uh, spent there fills him spiritually. Baptism tonight is Reuben's next step. It's a commitment he feels should have been made a long time ago. He just now realizes that and he's ready to act. So this night, Reuben Cruz Jr., you are baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is, next is Patricia Alviar. Patricia's parents were quite active in the apostolic church, so she grew up in church. But she's been away from the church for 28 years. She was feeling empty, and she knew that she needed to fill that void by having a better relationship with Jesus. Patricia came to Shoreline a few months ago and felt that she had found a home. You welcomed her, and you made her feel at home. Mentions of baptism rekindled feelings of never feeling good enough or deserving of baptism. She'd been wanting for, to for years just to feel like she was ready. But now, the doubts have disappeared, and she's ready to make this commitment. Patricia says, although I've had many struggles, he has been with me every step of the way. And there's no way I could have done it without him. This night, Patricia is baptized in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Next is Jeremy Roca. Jeremy came to know Jesus around age 10 or 11, but the intervening years have seen some detours and detrimental decisions. Even so, Jeremy has recently renewed this most important relationship, and he comes to these waters with a restored and renewed trust in God's regenerative power. His faith and belief have been strengthened, and tonight Jeremy declares to you, Shoreline, and to the world that he is proof of God's mercy and God's grace. And may the Lord continue to be a lamp to his feet and a light to his path. This night, Jeremy Roca is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Finally, Benjamin Saad, my friend Ben. Ben was baptized as a baby, but family dynamics dictated that by his 10th year, church life was no longer a reality. One byproduct of this was Ben living the next 14 years as he and the world pleased. Certainly not as might be pleasing to the Lord. Bad decisions and terrible mistakes led to negativity, and anger. But a George Bailey moment sitting in his truck in a Ford in a Food Lion parking lot provided a U-turn. Lord, if you're up there, show me the way. And the Lord showed up and showed the way. 
This past February found Ben at church for the first time in 15 years that wasn't for a holiday service. And as he says, I can't believe what I've been missing out on. There is a whole bunch more to his story and all the others. But for Ben, this is his next step in his journey with Jesus. And he is extremely delighted to be able to share it with you. So tonight, my friend Ben is baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. As we close with these, this last little time of singing here, if you've been baptized, remember that moment right now. Remember coming out of that water and the power of that. If you haven't been baptized and you want to be the next time we have baptism, jump into the class, be part of that. But if you're able to stand online at home, let's stand, let's close together with some celebration song.